welcome back and now we'll be talking about few more basics in ASP.NET MVC so let's try to identify life cycle difference between ASP.NET and ASP.NET MVC so normally in ASP.NET what happens is user gives a request as you can see from the screen itself user gives a request now IIS or any web server that we have will search for the page physically into the mapped directory on the drive once the page is found then that is handed over for processing to maybe AS frontend ISAP DLL or AS frontend engine in general and then that engine will read the content and accordingly will produce a final HTML so quick point to note here that a physical presence of a page is really required on the machine. So normal ASP.NET web form comes under a category of design patterns which is called as page controller patterns wherein page must exist is this is this is very mandatory. Now however in MVC it's different. Let's see how it is. Now in MVC user will never give a request to a page wherein ASP.NET user actually gives a request to a page here in MVC let's categorize model view controller MVC means model view controller let's categorize these three, three things as separate modules let's consider for a while view is a page with some extension now why not ASPX because we can have many other extensions so as of now let's understand view is some page with some extension does it contain any code behind absolutely no it's only UI specific page what's written into it let's say we will not discuss that for a while then we have one more section called as model wherein you can assume as of now that it is basically some data provider that it provides a data to our program who is that? It can be a web service, it can be a ORM framework like Entity Framework or Nhibernate or it can be a simple POCO class which holds the data and provides the data. Now who is a controller in this case? Controller is a class which is a mediator and this mediator is the one which is always and always going to get the hit from browser or from the client side. Now this class consists of a method and that method that whichever user calls that method will decide which UI which means which view which UI and which data and then based on the requirement it can do the blend of both and generate the final HTML for us. However it is not that simple as it looks like. So in short how user will give a request to the MVC application then? Have a look. Look at the screen. Request is always given not to the page here. Request is given to slash, just example, slash home slash index, wherein home stands for a class, which is actually a controller class. And index starts for a method, which is a very simple public plane method. Now that method internally will locate the view. This is where you come in picture as a coder. You have to decide which view you want to return when the user gives a call to slash home slash index and this is where again you come in picture when you decide which data the page should show. How will the page show data? How the blend will happen? How HTML will come in picture? We'll understand slowly in few sessions. As of now let's only understand how MVC is different than ASP.NET. ASP.NET request always comes for a page and the page is located by the server where in MVC request never comes for a page so user never knows which page he is calling or she is calling user will always give a call to a class name slash method name and somebody will create an object of that class somebody will call that method and somebody will find out a view and a model suggested by the programmer and we'll create the final HTML output for us. So who's that somebody will understand in the next slide. But then think to understand 
since user never gives a call to a page it's a class that basically is hit first which is a class called as controller and which further you can say takes the uh, talk with view and a model and does the blend and generates the final html so here mvc actually falls into another design pattern category called as front controller patterns so asp.net is a page controller pattern page is requested and page is searched mvc falls in page front controller pattern wherein page is never requested and controller class becomes the interface or so called front face specifically for your application who decides which ui and which data and returns to the client end as well so so far i guess we have it clear now how exactly it works and who is this controller who is this view and who is this model that we have how do i go and maybe let's say blend them together there must be many questions right now that how the state management will be done how exactly i'll have required view validation control how will have caching in mvc how will we go and achieve security in mvc because since you are from asp.net web form background you will have these questions in your mind and then we'll try to answer you can say each and every query that you have with web forms by only you can say doing analogy with respect to web form and then we'll understand it more quickly asp.net web forms it becomes uh, web form programmers it becomes very difficult to learn mvc because you have to unlearn asp.net and learn mvc as a new thing which is very hard but if you come with a fresh mind to learn mvc you learn it more quick so let's understand how mvc life cycle executes so let's understand it now here is what happens when user gives a request to some website slash home slash index the request comes to i now if you recall we try to discuss some time back a concept called as http handler wherein what did i say that is you can take a complete control of what to return and what not to return to the end user like we try to handle the aspx kind of a request and we return something different to the user by intruding in between exactly in the same manner microsoft has written one mvc handler which ultimately inherits from i http handler from where this class comes up it comes from a system.web.mvc as a namespace and same name dll as well now this mvc handler will sniff the request but the request has never come for a page request has come for home/index only and there is no sign of page extension so you handle in mvc applications that the request for this applications are going to, all request for this application is going to get handled by so called mvc handler this is always authored in mvc application with you can say first version of mvc it used to be there in a web config file now with the application type it actually is moved into machine config file now the next thing when the request comes up then the request url is handed over to that mvc handler whose first job is to split the request by slash after splitting what we get look at the step number 5 here after splitting the request or url by slash you will get two different parameters one is double quote home one is double quote index which means the first part that the mvc handler understands that it must locate for a class called as home controller named class and then after creating the object of that class it must give a call to a method called as index method which in turn will decide what page to look for what data to look for and will create final html and will offer it to us however it's again not that simple as it looks so after step number 5 after splitting job is done then the actual class name if you see in mvc which we'll see in, uh, in demonstration sometime the actual class name is home controller which means it has a word appended to it called as controller is it hard and fast absolutely no but default template in visual studio will offer us that word called as controller so what happens is you only give a call to home slash index and the home word will be appended automatically by controller word and the respective class is searched into the current project now after we search for the current class 
or after MVC handle searches for the current class, using reflection, it simply creates the class object called as home controller, which in turn inherits from a base class called as controller. And then with respect to that object, dot, the respective method gets called, called as index method. Now this is all done using reflection and the index method will simply return the output. But then in that sixth method that you see, there is a little challenge. Using reflection, I said you create an object, but then returning that object or creating an object is actually not returned anywhere in MVC handler. So rather MVC handler outsources that job to somebody else and that somebody else is actually called as MVC controller factory. It's a simple factory class which takes the double quote class name as an input and returns the class object called as home controller class object. So in six method, as I said, a call is given to a controller factory class, different class altogether. And then input given to that class is so called you can say home controller word in double quote. And then based on the home controller word, you'll find out controller factory class returns as the object of home controller class type by locating that class into current project, current namespace. Later on, home controller class, once we receive, we can very well give a call to a method called as index. Rather, it's not we, it's MVC handler which gives a call to index method. Next part to note here, can we decide which class object to return? Question why? Why? Because imagine a situation wherein the request comes up from a browser which has got native language or default language set up as English. And the request comes again, second request, which comes from a browser which has got a language default set to French. And I would like to call maybe French home controller class object or English home controller class object, which means can I decide which home controller class object to create? Can I take a complete control over it? Yes. And in MVC, this can be done with the help of a concept called as custom controller factory. So normally for localization on server side, one can very well use so-called custom controller factory. Now let's go back to previous slide. So in the previous slide, we observed now in the sixth, sixth part, using reflection to create a class object, it's not that simple step. It internally requires a controller factory which by default MVC has and you can change it as per your need to pick up a respective class object as well. Seventh one, I said call an index method and return the output. Again, call to index method is not that simple. Who decides index method to be called? So you'll find all this sequence that you see starting from the controller class object creation. You'll find out our seventh step has got something internal again. Home controller class internally will come from a base class called as controller and which internally has got an execute method inside it which we will observe in a while during a demonstration and then inside the execute method if you recall the discussion that we did some time back how to ensure a sequence so there was f1 f2 f3 method and we ensured a sequence exactly in the same manner controller base class has got an execute method which has got f1 f2 f3 and Somewhere down the hierarchy, we have one more method called as invoke action. An invoke action method internally gives a call to the index method, which comes in double quote. So, point to note here that F1, F2, F3, not every method is default implemented. So, sometimes you may have to implement the method as per your need. So, can we override so called F1, F2, F3? These are not the actual method. This is the, just to understand sample or you can say uh, methods that we talked in a previous example. So I have taken those methods as it is. Literally these methods are with a different name. So F1, F2, F3, can we go and call these methods by our own? Can we write down some basic code for these methods? So yes, we can do that job and that's where customization is again allowed. Why will somebody give a call to F1, F2, F3? Why will somebody like coder like me give a uh, maybe write a code for f1 f2 f3 so that's where the customization comes in picture and in mvc you can complete the customization for many things so we have an example we'll come back to it 
Now, after step number seven, which we have here, which is which was this step. So after uh, you can say controlling the sequence when it comes to index method, is it the index method which generates the final HTML for us? Because your browser understands default HTML. No. So after index method, there is also a call given to so-called view engine. Now when I say view engine, it's again a class which inherits from I view engine. Now uh, normally in MVC, you may have a page with the extension ASPX. You may have a page with the extension CSHTML or VBHTML. But then these pages may contain different contents unlike AS Frontend Web Form. And then those uh, you can say contents along with your data can be bundled together, can be blended together and a final HTML can be given. But who does this job? It's not your index method. After index method, the call is given to a view engine. And then we have to pick up view engine in the first place itself. The time we start with MVC project, you have to pick up which web form engine you are going to, which engine you are going to use in default. In initial demonstrations, we will be focusing on web form engine. Can we have our own extensions in this case as well? Definitely yes. And that's where one third party called as Spark engine does. So, after 7th, if you see in MVC where customization is allowed based on the discussion, one location so called controller factory, usage localization. Second, filters to do authorization, authentication, action, result, error are the filter types that we have. We'll dive into the detail after some time. So, filters you can call these methods like F1, F2, F3, which we talked earlier. So as of now, you can relate with F1, F2, F3. Custom binder. This is like if the input is given by the end user or the by the browser, can we customize that input before it goes to a method also? So we'll again come back to it as this is very vital session. Custom binder. And then can we create our own view engine? So yes. So we do have, you can say Razor or Sharp or you can say Spark as an engine available. So we can have our own view engine as well. And can, will we create one? So yes, we'll also be creating one view engine in a while. So that's it for, you can say, understanding MVC lifecycle. Now we will try to understand MVC lifecycle through a demonstration. So far, thank you.